One afternoon in 1944, a German businessman by the name of Valdemar Julesrud was hiking through the Cerro del Toro, a hill near the town of Acambro in Guanajuato, Mexico. Yulesrud spotted an object that looked like an ancient ceramic figure. Mr. Yulesrud sent a local laborer named Odilon Tinajero to search for more in the area. One day, Tinajero came back with a number of extraordinary specimens, objects made in hard clay that indeed looked like very ancient figurines. And so it continued, with dozens of items appearing every week with the finds totaling in the hundreds every month. While many pieces appear to have formal similarities to the ancient Chupicoro or other known Mesoamerican artifacts usually found in that region, others were hard to place in any time period or culture. The group included images of seahorses, turtles, ant eaters, llamas, and camels, complex architectural structures, strange social scenes such as a man playing with a giant monkey, women flirting with reptiles, animals with six arms, representations that have never been seen before or since. Moreover, other pieces had Egyptian, Indian, or African features. But one of the most perplexing group of ceramic figures was of animals from the Mesozoic era, such as Brontosaurus, Tractodon, Tyrannosaurus rex, and Plesiosaurus playfully running with a human. If authentic, the implications were profound. That was the beginning of the mysterious and unique Yule's Root collection, which after a few years of the always dependable dexterity of Odilon, reached a total of 37,000 pieces, and a debate around its authenticity, what to this day refuses to die. Valdemar Yule's Root was a German businessman who immigrated to Mexico in 1896. Sometime in the 1920s, he moved to the little and quiet town of Acambro, mainly known for its bakeries, and opened a store. On March 25, 1951, the Los Angeles Times published an article about the Yule's Root collection. It was then that an archaeology organization sent a trained archaeologist and researcher, Charles C. De Peso, in 1953. De Peso's study concluded that the collection was fake, citing several reasons. Thousands of objects had been found in exactly the same area, excavated and suspiciously restored by the same inexperienced person. There was no patination, nor a coating of soluble salts that characterized all ancient ceramics, and so forth. De Peso followed Odeon and his son and watched them excavate at the site for two days. He verified that the type of earth in that section where the figurines were lying was a mixture of contemporary soil and even saw fresh manure with older earth, which meant that the pieces had been planted. He also mentioned that he had found a family in a Combero who had made these figurines during the winter months when there was no work to do in the fields. Yulesrud would never accept this assessment. He wanted to prove that the mother of all cultures, more ancient than any other by hundreds of millions of years, had existed near the doorstep of his house in Acambro. In 1955, Arthur M. Young of Philadelphia, a philanthropist, paid for a researcher to go to Mexico to make a full study of the collection. The researcher was Charles H. Hapgood, a historian from Harvard. While he did not have any background as an archaeologist, Hapgood went to examine the collection and conduct excavations. He concluded the pieces were authentic. Young then proposed an exhibition of the Yule's Rude materials to Froelich Rainey, the director at the time of the University Museum in Philadelphia. The museum's curator, Linton Saddleweight, organized an exhibition of the pieces, including comic books with images of dinosaurs and other fantastic animals suggesting they could have been inspiration for their makers. In fact, natural history museums exhibiting fossils existed since 1790 in Mexico City. The first dinosaur, the Diplodocus Carnegie, was exhibited at the Chopo Museum in 1929. Yules Rude died in 1964, leaving his family with quite a legacy of objects. Odilon vanished around that time, and no one seemed to have heard from him ever again. The mystery behind the creatures of Acambaro continued. 
In 1969, three samples of the Acombro materials were sent to be examined by the University Museum where a new method of dating artifacts had been developed. Known as thermoluminescence, it consisted in calculating the amount of time since a particular crystalline material had been last heated. The initial reading surprisingly showed that the figurines were thousands of years old. This, to Hapgood and his supporters, became the final proof that the objects were authentic. The University Museum found itself in the awkward position of either confirming the pieces as fakes, which still all evidence pointed to, or admit that their testing method could be wrong. However, a detail that Hapgood conveniently ignored in the museum's report was a line that read, Our lab comments that to give accurate thermoluminescent dates, the pottery would have been fired above 500 degrees centigrade. The three figurines analyzed might not have been fired to that degree of heat, which would explain an error. In 1978, a new study proved that the thermoluminescence technique used previously was inaccurate, concluding once more that the Yulesrud collection was fake. And Hapgood never thought to check the many Acombro bakeries. Acombro is a town of large old ovens. The clay pieces may have been baked next to loaves of Acombro bread at less than 500 degrees. Las piezas precolombinas, al igual que cualquier otra pieza de cerámica, son absolutamente fáciles de, de, de repetirse, de, de copiarse. Tanto es así que los compañeros cuando están estudiando arqueología, eh, unos a otros se, hace, se juegan este, trampas y se hacen figurillas y se las entierran para que se pongan muy contentos cuando las encuentran y hasta después les dicen, pues mira, yo te la puse, ¿no? The pieces ended up in storage in the municipality of Acambaro. In the 1990s, a group of American creationists made their way to Acambaro to revive the controversy. To them, the pieces prove that dinosaurs and humans coexisted in the world. The new attention to the objects resulted in the creation in 2002 of the Museo Valdemar Yulesrud. Un poco imposible elaborar tanta figura. Hemos hecho algunos cálculos y se requeriría un ejército de gente para en el lapso que se que se coleccionó haberlas fabricado. Por eso nosotros tenemos la plena conciencia de que sí son de alguna manera este, auténticas. De hecho, la única evidencia que se tiene es la de Odilon, que dice que se encontraban de 20 a 40 piezas no, a no mucha profundidad, a 2, 3 metros de profundidad. Pero las piezas, las, digamos, las últimas pruebas que se han hecho sí han salido falsas. Se han salido falsas porque estuvieron, hayan estado expuestas a muchas, digamos, muchos agentes contaminantes, entonces ya no es posible datar. Sin pintura es muy fácil hacer y muy fácil este, venderlas, sobre todo a los coleccionistas. Ay, mire, a los coleccionistas eh, maniáticos se les puede vender cualquier cosa, claro. ¿verdad? Today, the web is full of various sites that exhaustively debate the authenticity of the pieces. A simple visual analysis of the objects may be the most objective and direct method to see the truth. Compared to authentic pre-Columbian objects, the Yulesrud collection is inventive, but highly uneven. The Yulesrud sculptures are crude in manufacture, formally indistinct and lacking unity and the type of cohesiveness that only a collective sense of purpose, that is, a cosmogony, by an entire society can inscribe. The manufacture of the Yule's root pieces is not too different from the thousands of pre-Columbian crafts that one can find outside of every single archaeological tourist site in Mexico. The original Chupicoro culture emerged around 400 BC in the late pre-classic period. Its pottery, which constitutes some of the oldest artifacts of ancient Mexico, are exquisitely patterned and elegantly designed, and widely considered some of the finest in Mesoamerica. Their clay sculptures include representations of families, of lactation, birth, and death. 
The fertility figurines are mysterious and beautiful with their long, elongated eyes. They often appear to be smiling as if they were so satisfied about keeping their mystery from us, silently reveling in the fact that we, the living mortals, are so profoundly ignorant about the past.